Man, guys, I, I love how we've been just walking through Joshua from chapter one and not not skipping any chapters and and we're just just seeing what God wants to say. There's always word in his word. <laughs> we don't have to jump around. There's always word, a word in his word. And as long as we sit with him, unpack it, get into his word, get into that posture. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to speak a mighty word to you each and every day of your life. And, and right here in Joshua 12, and just to recap yesterday, we were in Joshua 11, and we, we, we saw the intensified warfare that, that the Israelites were going in. And then at the end of chapter 11, it said that the land had rest. It, it, they rested. They began to cultivate the land. They began to take possession and learn how to live in the land that they just possessed. And we'll see all of that in the rest of the chapters of what that really means. But we talked yesterday a lot about rest. I believe that's that's the area where God is, is challenging us with intentionality on how to steward our, ourselves better so that we can move forward in him and in rest. And I think that that's a beautiful thing. And, and right here in Joshua 12, where, where we pick up at, and I'm going to read Joshua 12, verse 1. It says, and the, and the Israelites struck down the following kings on the land and took possession of their land beyond the Jordan to the east and from the Aaron River to Mount Hermon, including all of the all of the Arabah east word. I love that. And then it goes down. I want you to skim all the way down. Because in this chapter, they begin to list out all the kings. Come on, put them on notice. <laughs> put them on notice. And that's, and that's what my, 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 my kids, I'm kind of showing my age now. They say, put them on blast. They, they put them on notice and let them know these are all the kings that we have defeated. And they begin to list all of them. You take some time and read them through. They begin to list all, the, all of the kings that they defeated. And it goes all the way down to, to Joshua 12, 24. And, and it says at the very end, it says, and the total number of all the kings were 31. 31 kings that, that, that the Israelites, that Joshua led, that they, that they defeated. I love how the Bible family, here, here we go. I love how the Bible keeps record of the victories that the Israelites, uh, Israelites won. Come on. Sometimes in life family, and I had to challenge myself even yesterday, sometimes in life family, we can do a better job at, at counting the losses than we should be counting the blessings that's in our life. Yes, Israel did suffer a loss. Yes, Israel were d disobedient. We, we, we studied that. We began to unpack that. They were not perfect in conquering these victories or conquering uh, um, excuse me, these kings. They walked in some disobedience, but it shows me here, family, that 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 they took a moment to celebrate and recognize the victories that they had in their life. I, I just wonder. Here's the question that I asked myself yesterday. I just wonder, what are you counting today? Are you steadily counting the defeats that 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 point to? That they no longer point to the wins that in this in your life. Are are, are we just counting? Uh, are we just counting? Excuse me, are we just counting the losses that's in our life, or are we counting? Are, are we counting the actually victories that God has placed in our life? What are you counting today? Yes, you have some losses, Anthony, but you also have some wins. And we can, the, here's the decision today where we're always challenging what's going to get our focus. What's going to get our attention? Are we still going to just look at the losses and the pains or are we going to gauge into the promises that God has already fulfilled in our life? That, I want you to catch what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not even speaking about the promises that he's going to fulfill. No, no, no. I'm speaking about the kings that we have already defeated. Yeah, that's where I want to camp out today. Yes, God is going to move in your life in a mighty way. Yes, God is getting ready to do something. And we will preach that and we'll run around the church and we'll shout and we'll celebrate. But I want to park the vehicle right here and begin to look around my life and say, my, my God, you've been so good.
You've been so good to me. Look at all of this fruit that's already in my life. I know you're going to do something over there, but pray be to God that you're already moved in my life at a right now, at a right now moment. There's fruit in your life, my friend. And when we take a moment like we see here in Joshua 12, where we see where they begin to list out the victory. Yeah, here we go. Where they begin to put their eyes on the victories that they have just completed. Come on. Can you just begin to list out the kings that you have defeated in your life? Come on. Yeah, yeah, you got some victories. You got some battles. Come on. I, I see a battle scars, and those scars got a story. You need to begin to write down the kings that you have defeated. Yes, my friend, you suffer some loss. Yes, my friend, you have some pain. Yes, my friend, you're going through a season where it feels like you're just being pressed on both sides. But I'm here to remind myself. I'm here to remind you on this early morning that you have defeated some kings in your life. See, 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 speaking, speaking about kings, defeating kings, I, I love in the, in the ancient Near East and, and, and back in the day, it, it was common for, for a victorious king to, to go and cut the train of the defeated king's robe off. After defeating the king, so this is where we get it from in the Bible, where it says, uh, and the U Uzziah, the king died in, in, in the temple, the Holy Spirit filled the train. This is where all of this comes from, just to get some context. But I love, I love studying the, the, the ancient times and the kings, and I, I, love, I love that stuff. And I love how when they defeated another king, one of the things that they did, they would go up to the defeated king and, and, and cut off the, the hem of the garment the train of, uh, uh, of, of their robe and, and symbolically removing, rem removing his authority and rule. That's why they would cut it off. When, they, when we cut the, the, the end of the garment off, the robe off, I'm removing your authority. I'm removing your domain, uh, dominion. I'm re removing any power that you just have. I defeated you and now I'm cutting it off. The defeated king's train now will be added to the victorious king's train. So at the end of the day, when when when, when the king will will walk into the temple and the people will see the, 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 the victorious king's train, the prestige of that of that king will begin to well, excuse me will begin to rise. Why? Because now people can see the many battles that this king has won. See, I don't. I just don't think that was a word or 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 or, or a, a idea for the people. Let me say it this way: the king confidence begins to rise, to begin to rise when the king can look back and see the garment. Man, I I got a long garment. Come on, I, I got a long robe. Come on, this thing is flowing right now, and I believe that's a word for you today, because when you begin to look at your robe today, my friend, your robe is not short. Yeah. Your robe flows because you have defeated some kings by the grace of God and by the power that God has invested into you. You don't you're not walking around with a short robe. You're walking around with a long robe as we can as we study back in the ancient East. And this robe is filled with you overcoming many battles in your life. I, I, I just dare you to take a moment right now. And begin to think about how good God has been to you, how many battles that you have overcame, how many mountains that you have crossed, how, how many red seas that God has departed for your sake and your family's sake. I, I'm reminding you today because sometimes we can think we're walking with a short robe and God is saying, no, 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 Anthony, your robe is long. Your robe is long because of me. Come on. And when you're looking around and you're trying to say, my, my, am I just living in a season of defeat? No, if I, we look, if we take a second look, the pain and the, and the pressure may be there, but the victories from my past fruit is still here. The victories from my past season is still here. It's still present right now. And, and I want you to receive that because here we go again. What are you counting? Count it up. Count the blessings in your life. Count it up. Don't stop. Let's stop focusing in so much. Let's be truth with ourselves. Be true to ourselves. Let's walk in. Let's understand the reality of what we're dealing with. 
But understand, hear me today, feelings don't dictate how we move today. Can I say it this way? Because we are people of faith. Reality does not dictate how we move today. Yes, the truth is, you just know, let me say it this way. Yes, the reality is you're in a storm. That's the reality. We be true to ourselves. I would never preach a word to you to say, ignore the reality. No, no, no. We're human beings. You're going to feel it. You're going through it. Yes, yes, I understand it. That's the reality, but that's not the truth. See, there's a difference between reality and there's a difference between truth. The reality is you're being pressed right now, but the truth is, is that God is an overcomer and he's going to walk with you. He's going to always cover you. He's always going to guide you. He's always going to be the light until your path. The, 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 the truth is that he has blessed you back then. Come on, somebody. And he will bless you right now. And the truth says that he will bless you in the future. He's a God that never changed. Jesus is, was, is, and is forever. Come on, somebody. Somebody. That's the that's the truth. We we walk in the truth. See, we have to be reminded of that. We have to be reminded of because I, I, I believe this family, I believe, and here's where I, I challenge myself at, and I challenged myself even yesterday. I, I challenge myself in this area of that gratitude is gratitude not only helps the heart, Anthony. But 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 gratitude actually helps the eyes. Mm. This is what I needed yesterday as I'm I'm dreaming and I'm planning and and this is not working. I'm saying, man, I'm pressed right here, God. Like what what is going on? Like I'm working hard, but now when I work hard over here, it seems like this is failing. Then I go over here and I touch this, and now that's back failing. I'm, so here's what gratitude does. Gratitude doesn't just help the heart. Gratitude actually helps the eyes. Because sometimes we, we can struggle with seeing the victories in our life. We can struggle with seeing the fruit that's already around us. And this is why, family, it's important to be in his presence, not just in ours. Because in his presence, he reminds us that the victory has already been won. That you have victory in your life, in your, in your life Anthony. And I had to shift myself into a space of being, being grateful, my God. I know I'm, I feel like I'm losing in that space right there, but I'm so grateful for what you have already done in my life. And the reason why I'm grateful, because I know that, that, that we serve a God that does not just stop right there. We serve a God that moves in the overflow. And if he blessed me in that space, I know it's more to come. And God is saying, I'm still filling you up. I'm not done with you, Anthony. I'm not done with you, friend. Come on. I I'm still moving. And God is saying, you are my son. You are my daughter. And I will never leave you to starve. I I I'm still moving. But you already got some fruit. But some more fruit is on the way. My first point is this. Because when I, when I say count it up, count it up. <laughs> Excuse my early morning language. If you want me to be a little bit more dignified. But that's how I wrote it in my notes yesterday. Count it up. Count it up, Anthony. So stop counting the losses. Start counting your blessings. Stop counting your defeats. Start counting the kings that you have already defeated, Anthony. So stop, stop counting the pain and start counting the, the kings that you have defeated for your family, for your sons, for your wife, for the church. Count it up. And my first point is this, my, my, my first point is this, Pastor Chris, actually the first point is this, I went a little bit too quick, the first point is this, it, it's gratitude is the only way in and the only way out, that's my first point, let me say it again, gratitude is the only way in and the only way out, here's what I mean, here's what I mean, Psalms 100, 4 and 5, we just talked this a, a couple of weeks ago, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Come on. For the Lord is good and his faithful love endures forever. His faithfulness through all generations. See, see, we enter into his presence. We enter into his presence and it reminds us that the light begins to shine. That's why we're on Sunday. That's why we're talking about the tabernacle. Come on, hit the switch. When we step into his presence, it gives us, excuse me, it gives us the strength to hit the switch on things that we need to turn the light on. Maybe you need to turn the light on in your heart. 
Maybe today because you're frustrated and, and, and anger, come on, and bitterness can begin to rise and, and the things of the flesh can begin to move. We all suffer from it. Come on, somebody. And we need to hit the switch to, to walk with the right posture and the right smile. <laughs> and, 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 and even how people treat us, we have to hit the switch so that we can be in the right mindset. Where, where we're being treated certain ways on our job, but God is still calling us to be the light. We can't walk like they walk because they might be walking in the darkness. I don't know what kind of walk they're doing. I don't want to do that walk. But the walk that I do want to do, I want to do the walk of the spirit. In order to walk with the spirit, we have to enter into his presence. Because when we enter into his presence, now we can turn on the light. And when we turn on the light, we will see that when my, 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 there's fruit all around it that I can eat. I can, I can eat in my marriage. I can eat on my job. I can eat on this job hunting season. I, I, I can eat in this relationship. Is this the one I should be with God or is this not the one? Am I wasting my time? Come on, single people. See, see, we have to make sure we take time to hit the switch so that God can turn on the light, so that God light can shine. And it does not matter where you are. Walk into his presence and hit the switch. This is why I love the story that's found in Acts with Paul and Silas. We understand that Paul and Silas was locked up. They were in prison, shackles with chains. But as soon as they did what? As soon as they shift into the presence of God and they hit the switch. Come on, somebody. I preach it right now. Somebody preach it back to me. And it says suddenly. Come on. It said suddenly. It, it didn't say for a season, but I, I praise be to God that a suddenly move can happen at any moment in your life. And as soon as they begin to praise and as soon as they begin to sing, as soon as they begin to hit the switch, come on, somebody. Gratitude is the only way in. But also gratitude is the only way out. I'm I, I need to get out of this. Gratitude. I need to step into this. Gratitude. Because gratitude, a grateful heart. Let me, let me remind you again. A, a grateful heart is not just for the heart. It's for the eyes. Because the, a grateful heart will open up the eyes so that you can see how to enter in. A grateful heart will open up the eyes to show you how to step up, to step out. And you could be in a season where, where, where you feel like you're in prison and God is saying it's time to step out. Step out in faith. And a grateful heart will begin to shift you in that direction. I, I, I hope this is making sense to somebody. Because we're in a season where God is saying count it up. Count it up, Anthony. I, 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 in order to stay strong and chew on the right things that you need to chew on. Because if you're chewing on the wrong things, you, you, you're not getting stronger. You're not getting wiser. You're not, you're not stepping into the right thing. So we have to make sure that we're chewing on the right things. We have to make sure that we're chewing on the word of God. Because if we're chewing on negative thoughts, you will, be, you will eventually be, become, excuse me, those negative thoughts. My second point is this. My second point is this. Gratitude is never invisible or silent. Yeah, this is a good one. I, I had to tell myself this yesterday. <laughs> Gratitude is never invisible or silent. Let me give you uh, Luke 6.45. Luke 6.45, it says this. It says, the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. Come on, somebody. Sometimes we don't see the victory because we are not speaking the victory. You have to speak it, my friend. Even if you don't see it, speak it. Because this is what's stored up in your heart. And God is saying what's in your heart has to begin to come out. And the way that we keep the cycle going, the way that we keep the cycle filtrated, we got to read the word and then we got to speak the word. Speak the blessings over your life. Speak the, that the chains are being broken over your life. I, I don't see it, Pastor Anthony. I'm not asking if you see it. I'm asking you to speak it. I, I'm asking that you say, hey, this is the year that my family's getting out of financial debt. 
This is the year where, where I'm going to walk with wholesomeness. I, I'm going to walk as a as the whole man, as the whole woman. I, I'm going to work on my mind. This is the year I'm going to work on my spirit. This is the year I'm getting back in the gym. Come on, somebody. I'm, I'm working on the body. Whatever you are going after, write it down, chew on the word of God, and begin to speak it. Come on, speak it. Count those blessings in your life. Because if we're constantly just counting the losses, then our attention will only stay on the losses. But if we're counting the blessings, gratitude is not just for the heart. Gratitude is for your eyes. Because when you speak it, you are manifesting it out into the atmosphere. You are a construction builder, my friend. And, and you have the choice to build with life or you have the choice to build with death. Choose wisely today on how you're going to use your words to build the victories that's in your life. And you can, you, you can begin to build breakthrough or you can continue to build that prison. And you got to say, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not adding another brick to that wall that's called a prison. No, no, I, I, I'm breaking free of this and I'm stepping out on faith and believing and trusting God. See, only gratitude will help you move in that direction. And gratitude is never invisible. Mm -mm. You got to speak this thing. It's not silent. Gratitude is not silent. Come on, we, we, we let our God know. That's why praise is not a silent thing. You got to open up your mouth. You got to praise God. Come on. You got to release it down from the inside. Let him know. Come on. If my if I'm a father and I have three boys, come on. And I, I, I love when they come up to me and Prince and say, Daddy, I love you so much. Let, let Daddy know how much you love him. Let your father know how, how much you how much you love him today. My third point is this. I'm gonna move pretty quick. My third point is this. Grateful people can see a blessing. Grateful people can, can, can see a blessing. Let me say it again. Grateful people can see a blessing. Let me say it this way. You will eat what you say and what you say you will become. Let me say it again. You will eat what you say and what you say you will become. What are you eating, my friend? What, what, what have you been eating in 2023? What, it, what is God challenging you to eat in this season of your life? You will eat what you say. And what you say, you will become. And if we continue to walk in a season of speaking just defeat, hear, hear, me, hear, hear me today from the bottom of my heart, hear my heart. We will stay in defeat. And this is why community is, is so important so that when we can't speak it, my God, somebody else can help us help speak it for, for us. And then and we can come together and glean and be shopping. This is why we shop in one another. We, we help each another stay on fire for the Lord because this is why healthy community is important because when I can't see the blessing, I need my brother to come along. I need my wife to come along. Come on. I need, I, I need a friend to come along and begin to help me see what I, what I lost sight of. This is why being around other grateful people is beautiful in your life. It, it, nothing, is, nothing is worse than constantly being around other people who are not grateful. Mm. Nothing's worse than just being around other people who just always see negative in every situation. Mm. Yeah, we can unpack that right there. That's a whole sermon series. <laughs> and so, so this is why we have to make sure we un uproot sometimes and get planted in the right space so that we can flourish. Psalms 34, eight says it this way. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. See, taste and see, mm, taste it. I'm telling you, what are you eating? What are you eating? When you begin to taste God, you're going to say, man, this is good. This is good. I want more, God. I, want, I, I tasted all of that out there. I don't want no more of that. Because when we begin to taste what God has for us, it opens up our eyes, my friend. It opens up the gratitude that we walk in. And now we can begin to see, my God, there's fruit all, of, all around us. And so as we connect this back to, to Joshua, 
And we're talking about count it up because they were reminded of all of the kings that they defeated. I, 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 I was reminded even, even yesterday of, 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 of grabbing and, and, and writing down the victories that I have in life. Begin to write down the victories that I have. My God, what, what, not, not what you have already done. We, we, do, we do that a lot in, in January, the vision board, and that's beautiful, and please continue to do that. But sometimes we need to be reminded of, of the victories that we have already accomplished. We need to be reminded of, man, God, you moved. We defeated that king. Our family defeated the king of uh, financial debt. Our family defeated the king of, 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 of loneliness. My, the, my family, come on, speak that. You, you got to be reminded of that. And this is why affirmations are a beautiful thing. Man, I, I, I love, um, I'm being reminded, I, I love that sometimes Princeton, you guys know Princeton, if you're, if you're new here, you're going to hear him a lot in my sermons because he's, he's my hardest child, <laughs> the, the, the youngest one, the seven-year-old. And, and, and on the morning, Princeton goes downstairs, he sits at, we have a Google, Google Hub, um, a, a little uh, speaker screen has a video on it. And he eats the cereal right before breakfast. He's getting ready to come down here now um, and begin to eat around eight o'clock. And and I love how Pastor Brenna, um, Pastor Brenna, sometimes she will put on affirmations for Princeton, and she put on black man out for for young boy affirmations. So we'll walk over to Google and she's speaking to him. And Princeton sitting there eating, and 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 the screen is saying, "You are a great." Black king, <laughs> you are a great, you are a king. And it goes through like a, a lot of affirmation. And sometimes I walk through, I was like, yeah, you know, I, I am a king. Yeah, I, I am a king. That's right. Princeton, you're a king. I'm a king. We, we both kings. Speak the affirmations over your life. And just to, to begin to hear those words, I can begin to see Princeton rise up. Yeah, you're like, I, I am a king, dad. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, don't get a phone call home. Um, because you're a king, be on your best behavior because you're a king. And sometimes we we need those words. That's why I'm making this point. I'm making this connection. Because sometimes we're just hearing the voice of the enemy of what the, what the defeats that we have. And sometimes we need to get in a space, get in a pocket, get in a position where we can hear the affirmations of God. So even I remember even in week one of this series, I, rem I believe it was Kenya that was talking about write down the blessings that's in your life. And so I, I went in, I went and grabbed a job this morning. I went and grabbed a job. And one of the things I'm going to start doing, I have, I have no cards here. I'm just going to start writing down, man, the blessings that's already in my life. I'm going to write down King. Yeah. And, 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 and put it and put it right in the job. Put it right in a jar. Sometimes, my friend, you need to write yourself a, a, a love note. Yeah. Sometimes, my friend, you, you, you need to write yourself a compliment. And when the day gets tough and when that nasty email comes through, come on, sometimes, even as a pastor, sometimes I get some nasty emails on the morning and I just want to send that right to the trash can. Here's what I can do right after that nasty email. Man, you're, you're really winning, Pastor Anthony. You're a king. You, 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 you need to have those moments. Come on, somebody. You need to have, this is real talk. You need to have those moments where you learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. Because the enemy is always going to be shouting. He's never going to stop shouting. So we have to create pockets where we find how God is speaking to us. Begin today to write yourself some love notes. Begin today to begin to write yourself some compliments. Begin today, begin to encourage yourself. Yes, you are this. Yes, you are overcomer. Yes, you have accomplished so much in life. You have to remind yourself so when it gets tough on a Friday that you can keep pushing through because you see the fruit that God has already done in your life. Count it up, my friend. Count it up. Count it up. Count it up. Blessings, blessings. Amen, amen, amen.